Welcome to this edition of uh, Christian Connections. Now, this is the live program. It's 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time here in uh, Loma Linda. And uh, I'm just saying that because it's going to be replaying all week. And we'd like to have you tune in uh, when you tell your friends and neighbors about this program. It's going to be a really special program. Uh, by the way, the replay times are found on the website, uh, LLBN.TV, and uh, just click on that schedule and uh, you'll know what's happening at LLBN all the time. Well, as I said, we're going to have a great program for you tonight. Great special guests. Uh, Tommy Daniel is uh, joining us tonight. First time for you? Yes. At LLBN? Yes. Well, welcome to LLBN. Thank you. And next to her is uh, well, my favorite, uh, Dr. David Taylor. Thank you. How is uh, your blessings uh, for the day? Going well. Worked in the <laughs> yard. Got mm -hmm. myself in shape. Reflected on John. It's been oh. excellent. Yeah. What I love about Christian Connection, we give. We don't always ask. Mm. And it's really beautiful. Mm. Gospel, the beauty of it. Yeah. I just love this place. Mm. And I love you. You know, you make this place possible. I just want to thank you for your prayers and support. Uh, next to me is oh, Sheila Hodgkin, uh, faithful evermore. How has your week been going? Great, great now, because we have <laughs> these wonderful guests here. And yeah. Wonderful special music. <laughs> Pastor um, Adrian Presley is sitting by uh, Sheila, and uh, boy, he's going to be busy tonight. And uh, that's what makes the Christian connection uh, really special. You're sitting in for Ganem, and I thank you for uh, Ganem's out in assignment. Uh, should be joining us for the next edition of Christian Connections. But right now, how about some great music? Well, I'm so excited that. Pastor Adrian Presley is here with us, and he's going to be singing Amazing Grace. Thank you. So, can't wait to hear that. Amazing grace. 
Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Pastor uh, Adrian Presley. Amen. Pastor Adrian, you're over at the University Church. Yes, indeed. Yes. And uh, how long have you been there? Um, about five years now. It's five like years now? Time has flown so quickly. Yeah. About five years, yes. And I really love uh, your rendition of uh, Amazing Grace. Thank you so much. It's, it's really so, so nice to hear some mm. of the old ones. Mm. And, uh, done with such a style. I, uh, are you one of those that started singing when you were like nine years old? Or maybe <laughs> earlier? Mm. No, um, you remember, he, he knew me when I first started singing, mm -hmm. Dr. Taylor, back at Oakwood Academy. It must have been, I was, must have been about 17, 18 at the time. Yeah. 17, 18 at the time, yes. That's so, so how do you know, well, 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 what made you start singing? Oh, you have, how much time do you have tonight? Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> you want to save time for Sister Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got about well, 20 minutes. Right? Matter, yeah. And a quick nutshell, Pastor T. Marshall Kelly, who yeah. just passed a few months ago. He was my religion teacher at Oakwood Academy. And he stressed to each of us um, so much that we have all been given a gift from God. Amen. And I said, well, he didn't give me a gift. Mm -hmm. And he said, he did. You don't know what it is yet, but keep searching. Mm -hmm. So I went in the cow fields back in the horse, by the horses there and began to just begin to sing. And that's how it happened. Yeah. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Fabulous pipes. What a blessing. Yeah. Oh. I've, I've always loved yeah. your, your rendition. And the horses didn't stampede. <laughs> no. He did a fine job. Didn't stampede. I remember it was Moran Hall. You're yeah. right. Where he sang and his mother stood out in the hall. And she was nervous. And he made his debut. And after he sang, the students let out a loud amen, hallelujah. Yeah. The mother shook her head. Yeah. That's his gift. Oh, mm -hmm. mercy. Never forget it. Wow. Mm. Amen. Beautiful story. Oh, beautiful. beautiful story. Well, we've got a, a really special guest, uh, <clears throat> Tommy Daniels. It has been around, but uh, not around Lomo Linda Broadcasting Network. Mm. Tommy, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what are you up to these days? Man. My name is Tommy Daniel. I. I'm doing so many things. Mm. I volunteer with Pastor Adrian mm. at the UCARE mm. Department of the Loma Linda University Church, where I have been a member for 10 years now. 10 years? Yes. And I am also a member of the Rooted Sabbath School Department. So that's what I do at church. I also work with multiple organizations mm. and ministries to help them get international partnerships with organizations oh, yeah. here in the U.S. and mm. in other parts of the world. My day job is as a grant specialist at Cal State mm. University in San Bernardino. Wow. So that's a little of what I do. <laughs> so when do you find time to sleep? Oh, I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep. Well, one thing I would mention, I want to ask her, um, she just returned from a trip to Nigeria with a group from Loma Linda. What was that about? I want to ask her what that was. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I went with, we, we have a university in Nigeria, Adventist University, that's called Babcock University. It started as a, an overseas campus of Andrews University, but now it has full accreditation mm -hmm. as a Nigerian university. It is, in some respects, the largest Adventist university in the world Man. because they have about 12,000 undergraduate students wow. and they have graduate programs all the way to the doctoral level. Amen. So they have a large teaching hospital Medical students alone are 700. <laughs> and that's the limit that the government gave them. Because for every five people that apply, they can only take one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's room for growth. Mm -hmm. People send their children there, mainly because of the Adventist values that they know will be there. There are a lot of non-Adventist students, but they are there because of the Adventist uh, form of education and the values that we impart. Mm -hmm. So I went with 
a group of cardiologists and internal medicine and pediatric pediatrician and we went there to explore collaboration with them they have a cardiac center a heart hospital that is taking care of about 40 percent of the needs in Nigeria mm -hmm. so it's very important for them to expand their operations Loma Linda is here. 47 percent you said? About 40 percent mm. of the cardiac needs in Nigeria. The whole country? Yes and it's a large country there's multiple specialists but there are challenges with some of the hospitals. Loma Linda medical system and Catherine Adventist health system of Florida. There are Adventist medical systems here in the U.S. have some things that they can benefit from, you know, through collaboration. So this was a test run to see what can happen just in the field of mm. cardiology. They have about 11 other specialties where they are training residents. So we're thinking of how to expand the cardiology residency training program yeah. for them in the coming years and what that would look like. You know. oh. Is this your first trip to Nigeria? I was born and raised in Nigeria. Oh, well, you didn't Nigeria. say that before. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was in Nairobi once for a day yeah. or two. So. And, yeah. Kind of. Yeah, in my former life, so my first life, I practiced law. Yeah. And then my second life, I switched to international development. Mm -hmm. So I was actually actual director for Nigeria until we came here. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I kept going oh. back and looking mm -hmm. for opportunities. For so that. when did you meet Jesus? Huh. When I was a kid, mm -hmm. yeah. I was born and raised in this church. My grandfather met the first missionary that went to Ileife, ah. which, is a, which is a location where we have one of the first, mm. actually the first Adventist hospital in Nigeria. And so the church in that location started in my grandpa's house. Mm. And so many of my parents, a lot of my uncles and aunts were born into the church. But as I said earlier, I studied mm. law the first time. I actually went to Asua, which was the overseas campus of Andrews University oh, before yeah. I became Babcock. But at that time, they did not have a law program. Okay. Right now they do, you know. So I went to the government, hosp uh, the government university, which is about 25,000 students. Now, when you go to that kind of place for school, you have to reckon with the question, is the church, your parent's church or your church? And that was where I settled that question that... I wasn't only born into this church, but this is my church, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, so. obviously the Holy Spirit is working through you Amen. to uh, accomplish uh, many mighty uh, works. And uh, you have a presentation. Yes. I noticed that um, you're a, got Bible verses here, uh, John chapter 12, you're gonna preach on that. Yes. What is your title? Jesus on Purpose. Well, take the stand and testify. Thank Amen. you very much. Uh, Greetings, viewers. I don't know what part of the world you are at now. I don't know what time of the day it is for you. But wherever you are and whatever you're doing, God has a special message for you tonight, directly from his word. I have no way to embellish it because it doesn't need any embellishment. It is God's word straight from his word to your ears. I am just a channel. Now, as you heard earlier, the title is Jesus on Purpose. What does this mean? First, we'll go to the word, but let's pray. Father, this is your word. This is about your life. And this is a message that you have for us. And so, Lord, I pray that you will illuminate your word Speak to us 
and help us to grasp the light that you offer to us to dispel the darkness that hovers in the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As you heard earlier, this is, we're going to start with this verse in the Bible. Jesus on purpose. The topic of purpose or the theme of purpose is one of the most popular in the world now. It ties to the question, why am I here? What is my purpose on earth? And people will tell you, oh, you have to create your purpose. Oh, you have to find your purpose. Oh, you have to just work something out. There's so many formulas out there, formulas that are based on different religions, formulas that are based by a lot of philosophies. But the question of purpose, the question of why am I here, goes to the question, to the issue of who am I? Now, if you want to find out what is the purpose, I have a clicker in my hand. What is the purpose of this clicker? I may not know it, but the easiest place for you to find out would be to check the manual that the manufacturer made for this. So if we're talking about what is the purpose of man's life, what is the purpose of my life, of your life, it would be good to ask the manufacturer or the creator. Some people don't like to hear that, but God is a creator of man. So as a created being, has it left me to wonder why am I here? Or has he provided answers? And that's why we're looking into the Bible. The Bible has accounts of lives that have been lived fully and have done, they've completed their term on earth, they're gone. And of all the lives in the Bible, that of Christ is the most sinless, the most perfect. And that's why we're doing Jesus on purpose. There are so many other characters that we can explore the topic of purpose from, but we will start with Jesus. And we're looking at this important verse in the Bible. It says, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Who said these famous words? If you're looking in your Bible, and this is in John 12, 27. If you're looking in your Bible, you would see it in the red letter section of it. That's where this verse came from. That is, these are the words of Jesus saying, now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. In exploring this verse, we would backtrack a little. Jesus did not utter these words in his childhood. He did not utter these words when he was born. He said these words close to the end of his life. If you are familiar with the story, when Christ came and after he grew up a little, the first miracle that he performed was the wedding and Cana. They ran out of wine. His mother said, they have no more wine. What did Jesus say? Woman, what have I to do with you? My time has not yet come. Later, his brothers told him, oh, there's a festival. Are you not going? He said, my time has not yet come. Very conscious of his time. But here he says, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. And the use time, time and hour, different versions use them differently. Earlier, Pastor Adrian sang Amazing Grace. We are familiar with that hymn. It's one of the most popular hymns in the world. But I can tell you as much as I love singing, there is no way 
I can sing it the way he did. He sang it so beautifully, it touched us, and it probably touched you as well. But I know him, and I know that's not the only thing that he does. And we asked him about it. He said, oh, there was a time when he thought he did not have a gift. Jesus said, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. If you are familiar with the topic of purpose, discussion on the topic of purpose in the world generally, you check online or if you've had this discussion with people, some will tell you, oh, your passion is your purpose. Some will tell you, oh, whatever you're doing, your vocation, or just create something. But it is from Christ's life that we got the distinctions that every human being, me, you, everybody here in this room, we're made of so many parts. And purpose is one thing that weaves through our lives. I like to say that purpose predates the womb and it outlasts the tomb, as we saw in Christ's life. And so, imagine if Christ had not come to this hour, if he had said, oh, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Oh, Father, save me from this hour. I can no longer go on. Where would you be, and where would I be today? Think about it. If you had lived in Nazareth with Jesus growing up and you had needed a table and you had taken it to Joseph's carpentry workshop and met Jesus, what would you have said after interacting with him? Oh my goodness, this child was born to be a carpenter. Or if you had gone there to pick it up after it was done, you would have said, this guy was born to be a carpenter. But was that why Jesus was born? No. Was that the purpose of his life? No. He did carpentry. That was a vocation at a stage in his life. But he said, for this purpose, I came to this hour. Fully conscious that there was more to him than something that he had to do for part of his life. If you had been on the mount when he preached the sermon on the mount, you would have certainly left with a distinct impression. My word, this man was born to preach. But if all Christ had done in his life was to teach on the mount, was to preach. Where would you be? Where would I be? If you had been in the temple when Christ preached, when he taught, and people's eyes, if their ears were open, their minds were enlightened, what would you have said? My goodness, this man was born to teach. If you had been there when he raised the dead, when he healed the sick, you would have said, this man was born to heal the sick, to raise the dead. But in Christ's life, we see how he compartmentalized everything and still fused them together. He had his passions. He would often retreat to places to pray. And the world would tell you that your passion is your purpose. But imagine if all Jesus had done on earth was to pray, which was something that he loved to do. Would we be saved today? Where would you be? Where would I be? Imagine if all he had focused on was his vocation. If all he had focused on was his ministry of healing, of teaching, of preaching. Where would you be? Where would I be? Christ did all of those things. His life was full, rich and full. It impacted lives. He had a mission to the house of the, to the Jews. He had a mission to uh, people in Samaria. He went beyond to so many places and he ministered to them. Imagine if Christ had said, I have found this one thing. 
and this is what I am settling for. Where would you be? Where would I be? That's how important this question, this subject of purpose is for us. Because each one of us, God sent us to this world as his hands and feet to perform something, one unique thing. And none of us will be just one side. That won't just be one side to us. Pastor Adrian, I know him as a pastor with a heart for care, to care for souls. I have heard testimonies from people. I have experienced this personally. But listen to how he sang. Imagine if all he decides to focus on is just to sing. What will he say to his creator at the end? Who will say, I gave you gifts for you to be able to carry out multiple missions throughout different seasons of your life. I gave you the heart to be passionate about so many things. I gave you a vocation. But this one purpose that I gave you, whatever his purpose is, did you fulfill that purpose? We know from the life of Christ, he got to the point where everything he had done, healing, teaching, preaching, praying, some Christians would tell you, oh yeah, my purpose is to pray. God expects every Christian to pray, just as a model for us. He said, I want you to connect with me in prayer every day. There is no one person that he has assigned the purpose of praying. It is something that he has assigned to each one of us. Anyone who believes in him is like, communicate with me. He modeled all of that and he said, just follow my example, follow my lead. And so everything that he had done, he got to the point where it was now time for him to fulfill his purpose because he realized that everything he did before were merely preparatory to his purpose. And so when he got to that point, his soul was troubled because it was a purpose the fulfillment of his purpose required pain, tremendous pain, far greater than the pain of a scandal of his conception, the difficult uh, uh, growth, ch childhood that he had, the attacks, the repulsion from people, all kinds of things that he had experienced. All those challenges paled in comparison to what he knew was ahead of him. And he got to that point and he made the statement, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. And the challenge that I want to throw out to you tonight is it wasn't easy for Christ. I don't know that it will be easy for you. I don't know that it was easy for a lot of other people in the Bible. But can we learn from Christ and say, we can express ourselves. We can be troubled by what lay ahead. But if we can remember that there is a purpose to our lives, a reason for which we were sent to this world, it will be bigger then whatever missions we have executed or we will execute until we die, it will be bigger and richer than whatever passions we have, whether they are four or five or even just one. It will be bigger than our ministries, our vocation, whatever it is. There is one reason that Christ attaches to each life. That's why he told Jeremiah, before you were even formed, I knew you. Before you were conceived, oh, I had a plan for you. Christ, there was a foretelling of his purpose right from Eden. He was going to come and bring about that restoration between God and man. And when he was on earth, he was conscious of that. 
He lived with a consciousness of his purpose. He lived with a consciousness that he had a, a, a timeline within which to work. He had obligations. He was conscious of a time that he had. He was conscious of his relationships, the people to which he had been called. He had passions that helped him. And he did not choose things that put him in the opposite direction of his purpose. So when he came to this point, he knew that it was not yet over, that he still had that one thing to fulfill. We can be awed by the miracle of his having fed 5,000 men and countless women and children, or 4,000, that he healed the sick and all of that. But Christ did not stop at any of those other activities because they, none of them was his purpose. And so I don't know how old you are as you are listening now. I don't know what you've done. I don't know where you've been. Until Christ says, until God says, it is time for you to go to your rest. You still have time to fulfill your purpose. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you have. And you have a short while afterwards to help transition to the next level. But Christ did not plead to be saved from the hour of the fulfillment of his purpose, even though he saw the pain that was ahead of him. He went ahead and did not say, Lord, what I've done in the past, you count for something. All these other things that I've done that have impacted lives should count for something. He knew that he was sent here to die for the salvation of the world. And while God does not expect any of us to die for another, that work is done. There will be other things that he needs us to do and for which he has sent us. He chose the place where you were born. He chose the family you were born into. Human beings may think that was a mistake, but the creator of all life makes no mistake. He made you. He has the blueprint of your life. And if you follow Christ's example, you will have that connection with God the Father, the creator, that you will be able to say, show me my purpose because I don't know it. Or I know my purpose, but my soul is troubled at the point of fulfilling that purpose. Please help me. And so tonight, I just want to encourage you. Christ came to our world just like we came. He was born of a woman. He lived on earth. He accomplished so many things. He did not waste any of his talents, but he kept sight of his purpose. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. God does not make mistakes. He does not. There's no human being that is without a purpose. When people say this person lacks purpose, that is an insult on the creator because God is not an aimless creator. To every life he sent here, he has assigned a purpose. He has affixed a purpose. And until you find out what yours is, you have not really started living. You have just been living in the realm of passion and ministry and vocation and missions and all those other things. Christ did all of that. Plus, he lived his purpose. Think about it. There are people who are waiting, whose lives may depend on you fulfilling your purpose. If Christ had dropped the ball again, where would you be today? Where would I be? What hope will we have? Whatever purpose God has assigned to your life, it is important enough for you to find out. Ask God, what is it? Why did you send me here? Why am I here? Why am I still alive? Ask him. He delights in revealing those questions, those, the answers to those questions to us. The world languishes 
Check online, Google the word purpose, life purpose. Many are languishing to know what their purpose is. They manufacture all kinds of things. They create all kinds of things. But God has not left us to wonder in confusion. He will tell you if you ask him. And I pray that you would take him up on that offer and say, Lord, you made me. I don't want to live a life of uselessness. I don't want to live at half mast. I don't want to live a life of half measures because we are going to give account before him. When he was done, he was happy to ascend to his father. He's coming back again and he's going to ask us to give account. It will not be enough for you to say, oh Lord, I did multiple missions. Or I had so many passions that I perfected and enjoyed. Now he's going to ask the reason for which I sent you to the world and equipped you. Did you fulfill it or did you balk at the first sign of trouble? May the Lord richly bless you as you listen. And I encourage you go to his word. Seek him out in prayer. Connect with him. He will guide you. Amen. Let's say a quick word of prayer. Yes. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for being the creator of our lives. Help us to remember who we are, dearly loved children of yours. Help us to remember whose we are so that we will not languish like the world in answering the question, why am I here? Why are we here? But we will get clarity from you and courage to be able to fulfill that purpose. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on back. Let's talk. Amen. <laughs> Tell me Daniel, minister of the word. Wow. <laughs> Amen. A thought-provoking message. Truly. Which he, Truly. Very inspiring. Yes. So what did you, uh, what comes to mind? I, I've yet to keep praying for my purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, it's that, um, it was very inspirational. You know, because my kids always ask me, Mom, what's my purpose? Mm. And I said, I can't tell you what your purpose is, mm. but God can. Mm. And I, and uh, you know, when my husband passed, I said, why my husband? Mm. You know, what, what's my purpose in mm. being left behind? Mm. You know, mm. so sometimes I, um, I ask that question mm. daily. I would say kids. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> definitely, definitely kids to help them guide them yeah. to their purpose. <laughs> and that helps you too. Yeah, mm. that helps me so. too. Well, Pastor Edrin, uh, this idea of purpose, you know, she talked about compartmentalizing purpose. You know, we can do multiple things like she does. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Nobody really thinks about that. Mm -hmm. um, pastorhood is filled with a demanding purpose. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I think this is so true. Um, I think that in pastoring, we are called to do so many things. Um, to teach, to preach, to administrate, and um, no one ever does all of them perfectly well. So um, the, the uniqueness of Loma Linda Church is that we can focus in and zone in on a particular purpose in that way. Um, but one of the things I really appreciate about what Sister Tommy said that was so inspiring that I, I, don't, I didn't think about it as much is how God wants us to use all of these gifts to his glory. Mm -hmm. And I think society sometimes kind of wants to direct us in a certain way. Yeah. This is your lane. This is your lane. This is your lane. We get kind of stuck in that way. But what you spoke about so beautifully is that God wants us to develop all of these gifts. <laughs> and even the point that you said was so powerful, and I've heard this before from a preacher, but not the way you said it, um, that there are many people who are waiting to be blessed by the gifts that we have. Mm -hmm. And if we don't use them in the proper way, they may miss that blessing. Mm -hmm. So um, God doesn't make mistakes. As you said, we all have a divine purpose yes. for his glory, yes. ultimately. Yes. And, yeah. Go ahead. 
Well, and sometimes, just like what Jesus said, you know, um, my purpose was for this hour, even though it wasn't mm -hmm. a great hour. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, sometimes we're called to something that we don't really want to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I like how you presented that. Um, just like the disciples, they were called to go out into the world and they all didn't mm -hmm. die great deaths, you know, but, oh, yeah, but yeah. because of the cause of Christ, mm -hmm. that Christ was so embedded in mm -hmm. who they were, mm -hmm. they could rise above whatever challenges we face in this world. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Taylor. Yes, sir. I appreciate your message. Thank you. Beautiful. Tell me about the wisdom of purpose. <laughs> the wisdom of purpose. Let me say it this way. When I read the text, mm -hmm. here Jesus, 100% God, 100% man, mm -hmm. not 50-50, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. God, very mm -hmm. man. Made in the councils of eternity, mm -hmm. this plan. And now he's praying, Father, let this go from me. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't take it. Mm -hmm. He's praying. He's praying. It's boldly recorded by John. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And our purpose, as they say, raison d'etre mm -hmm. for living why? And you made a very good point. We see, hey, that's only for you. That's only for you. That's only for you. Mm -hmm. And we try to control, but this was made. And so Jesus, mm -hmm. Father, and when you look at the text, when he talks to the Father, notice what John says. And the voice was heard from Heaven, mm -hmm. from heaven, mm -hmm. not the atmospheric, stratosphere, mm -hmm. but ever mm -hmm. paradising, in eternity, voice saying, my son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that purpose, your purpose for being, yours, mine, mm -hmm. God gives us that gift. Mm -hmm. And I cannot determine, well, this is your gift and your gift only. The Holy Spirit decides that. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you were saying, you just don't tell where a person mm -hmm. goes. And mm -hmm. I think today we need to look carefully at mm -hmm. decisions we make. Mm -hmm. Jesus shrinking, mm -hmm. but the voice, this is vitally important. Mm -hmm. And this ministry should be Christ-centered. Yes. yes, yes. And that's where you, you miss it so many times. Mm -hmm. yeah, purposely. Purpose. So mm. when we talk about values, mm. we talk about integrity. Mm. We talk about principle. Mm. Mm -hmm. My values. What's your value system? Mm -hmm. It speaks about your integrity. What are you all about? Mm -hmm. You see, so here Jesus, this struggle, but not my will, but your will, your will be done. Amen. So it's so important that we may not always understand. We can get, when I talk with other theologians, I say we, we dialogue. Mm. But when I talk with the lay person, I say, well, we just don't theologize. Mm. We look at Bible mm. and look at the context. And it's beautiful when it mm. comes to this point. Because mm. three big events happens before this cross experience. Mm -hmm. And the first yeah. one that as you look, mm -hmm. John, Mary washing his feet with her tears mm -hmm. and her braids, mm -hmm. you see. Wow. And her tears and the tears, God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. No, he gave us tear ducts for a purpose. Mm -hmm. The causes of tears, not tears themselves. Tears of joy, wipe that joy away in heaven? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. not at all. You see, the second event after that, because, you see, they met with Jesus on Sabbath. The next day, on the first day of the week, 
That's where you get Palm Sunday from. Mm. He made his grand entry mm. into Jerusalem. Mm. His purpose, his raison d'etre, why am I here? Mm. I may not always want to do this. If I were to use today's parlance or language, I would say they had a big demonstration. Mm. And at that demonstration, <laughs> they went into the city. Mm. And just to really point it out, he was on the back of that donkey or that mm. palm branches. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, before that cross, his purpose was the Hellenized Jews grew up in Greek territory. Mm. They said, we would see Jesus. Aristotle, and, well, we want to see Jesus. And that's so vital for us today in our preaching, mm -hmm. our teaching. And like I tell folks, you know, I never worked a day in my life. Mm. And I've had about 55, close to 60 years in ministry. Wow. Because I enjoy what mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. So it's not work. Mm. And, and people say today, well, you know, I, I work from home. I say, no, no, you work from work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what you, but your purpose, why are we here? Mm. And so we, we need to get young people to see that. Mm. But first, 11 chapters, we'll find Jesus among the people. Mm -hmm. And now after being among the people, chapter 12, mm -hmm. my purpose. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a little musical break, and then uh, we're going to come back with uh, yeah. tell me Daniel and uh, talk to a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, Pastor Adrian. Yes. Tell us about uh, what we're going to hear. Well, we get to hear again from <laughs> Pastor Adrian Presley. And um, Pastor Presley and I were in um, Jerusalem together. We went to Israel together. Mm -hmm. And he, mm -hmm. it was so powerful when we were um, where Jesus died. Mm -hmm. And he sang this beautiful song, Were You There? Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved it then, and I loved it now. Thank you, Shelly. <laughs> Thank you. No favorites. up 
from the grave Were you there when he rose up from the grave Oh Some Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when he rose up from the grave? Will you be there when they crown him Lord of Lords? Will you be there when they crown him Lord of Lords? My Lord. Um, mm -hmm. Pastor uh, Adrian Price. Yes. Yeah. I wish we had more time because I'd ask you to go and do another yeah, one. We need to have a oh, concert. We also have time. <laughs> wow. I wish we had more time because I can ask uh, Toby to go and, and uh, Amen. speak yeah. to her house again. Uh, one last question for you. I've witnessed and participated in thousands of messages. I've never heard someone use that particular verse, John 12, 27. Tell us why you chose that verse. It's something that speaks to me and helps me to answer that question of why am I here? I used to do a lot of trainings for young professionals and also, you know, as ADRA director, you're trying to get people to think about more than just work. Mm -hmm. And then personally, I do a lot of things well because I enjoy doing them and because I think God just helps me to do them well mm. and mm. so if I am in a place and all I'm talking about is law and policy making you know at the governmental level national mm. continental people think that is all there is to me and people respond that way and say oh you should be doing more of this and let's talk and, and this. If I am doing Bible studies, people go like, oh, you, are you a pastor? No, I am not. I just love <laughs> studying the Bible. <laughs> you know, if I am talking about nonprofit stuff or some other things, I have like seven different things that I enjoy and I can talk about all day. People attend to me, they, they address me, they respond to me in those ways. And I know that's not all there is to me. And so at a point in my life, I struggled when people ask, what do you do? I'm like, which do I focus on? And the more I studied the Bible, the more I saw that 
Wait a minute. Jesus was good at so many things, mm -hmm. but he kept all these things in proper perspective because he was fully conscious of his purpose. And so there's a term that the world has come up with, which is multi-potentialite. That is someone who does a lot of things well. Jesus was a big multi-potentialite, but he got to that point, John 12, 42, he said, Ah, I have come like 30 years. I know I don't have much time left. I am now at the crux of the road, the crux of purpose. I'm looking at it ahead. Do I say the past should count? And like, Lord, round it up. Let's forget about the purpose. Mm. No, he didn't say that. He didn't do that. She needs so. a church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, I agree. Um, you know, we've got a minute or so left. Uh, I'm going to give you the last word, uh, Adrian. What would you like to uh, say to our, our audience? Well, I just want to say that the message that you heard today is so applicable to us. And I think that I hope that it challenges you as it has challenged me to say, Lord, what is it inside of me that you want to bless mm -hmm. someone else with? Remembering that that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift, mm -hmm. and that the gifts are from the gift giver, not mm -hmm. for our edification, mm -hmm. not for our glory, but for his. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much. And thank you for your support, and uh, thank you for uh, telling others, Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, Amen. If, you, if you listen to the news, Mm. Even if you don't listen to the news and mm -hmm. you watch any kind of mm. television today, mm. uh, except LLBN, uh, <laughs> it's, it's screaming. Jesus needs to come back now. Yes, yes. You know, is it going to get better? People are waiting for it to get better. Everybody's talking about the new normal. <laughs> what happened to the old normal? Uh oh. Right? Uh -oh. Where is it? It's what? not coming back. That's why LOBN is existing, to tell you and advance the messages of Jesus. Thanks for watching.